Yo, what's cracking everyone? Eric Ship Triple One here, and today is the day where the embargo for all Forza Horizon 5 content gets lifted, and I can't wait to share, create, and also play with all you amazing subscribers in my returning subscriber showcase for this Horizon game. Now, if you are new and do enjoy what you see, please feel free to subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on. We cover pretty much everything Horizon 5 related, and for all the returning subscribers, we are pretty much here. So full disclosure, I did receive a reviewer's copy of Horizon 5 around a week ago and I've been playing this game as much as I can as a content creator as well as a gamer as well because I think it's important to dissect the game with all my Horizon knowledge but also try to view or experience the game from a consumer's perspective. Now I know most reviewers won't mention this but all the biggest gaming journalists, news outlets to even your favourite YouTube YouTuber, all received the copy of this game no earlier than myself, so every video or news article that you read about Horizon 5 is within a one week span of gameplay. And I'm pretty sure many of you know Playground Games support their games a lot post launch, so really all of the reviews including mine in this video will really only cover a small portion of the game, but enough to paint a general picture of what you can expect once you load up Forza Horizon 5 for the very first time. So I'm going to break things into numbered points like I do in most of my videos but separated between two categories, one being the good and the other of course being the bad. I mean no game is ever perfect right? But let's start off with all the good stuff beginning with number one, the map. So when Playground Games first announced Mexico as the next Horizon location, I was a bit sceptical as to why Playground Games would choose here as I'm sure majority of the community including myself was expecting Japan. However, after being able to see the map come to fruition, I think I now understand why Playground Games chose Mexico for Horizon's fifth instalment. You see, back in Horizon 4, one of the biggest criticisms that it received was that the United Kingdom setting lacked a lot of environmental diversity, you could drive anywhere around the map and it would look and feel the same. And as for the players who came from Horizon 3 Australia, which featured a map with lots of different landscapes and conditions, it felt as though Playground Games took away a core feature from the Horizon series. But with Horizon 5, there's more map diversity than ever with 11 different biomes jam-packed into the largest map Playground Games have ever made in a Horizon series, there's plenty of places to discover and things to see. And as someone who has been critical of the Horizon series, I'm very impressed with what Playground Games have achieved here. On top of that, Playground Games fixes other map issues that were present from Horizon 4, including the return of the One Mile Airstrip, which I'm sure will make a lot of the drag racing community very happy, along with the longest highway ever featured in any Horizon title, allowing us to finally, truly max out all of our cars top speed. But what's more impressive is that Playground Games just doesn't stop there. With so much map canvas, they have also included features like two massive toge roads or hill climbs coming off from a massive volcano, two different racetracks, one on tarmac and the other off-road, two kilometers of underground tunnels in the map's main city of Guanajuato, to even a massive stadium with so much parking space around, I can definitely see it being a great place for a proper car meet. What Horizon 5 has done here with the map is actually learned from all the mistakes and criticisms that were made from Horizon 4 UK and go above and beyond to quite possibly the best map Playground Games have developed to date. Number two, game structure. So again, you are probably going to see this common trend of Horizon 5 being compared to Horizon 4, but the overall game structure compared to Horizon 4 just makes more sense. There's a goal at the end you need to achieve, and that is of course to reach the Horizon Hall of Fame. And to do that, you complete a bunch of races and challenges so you can accumulate enough accolade points where once a certain amount is reached, a new Horizon Adventure chapter will be available to be unlocked. Now the best part is, 
you have full control on which direction you want to go with your horizon adventure. If you're somebody that loves a good cross country, then the Baja adventure will be the best option for you. Or if you're somebody like myself that likes to dabble into everything, then you can choose everything one at a time. We have all the freedom and the best part is, is that there's still a goal at the end of the day. There's something to work towards while not being forced a linear path that the game has carved out. Within each of these Horizon adventures, there's a lot of mini stories ranging from finding Papa Fernando's Vocho to exploring the volcano up close while it's about to erupt. It's pretty cool and all the stories and characters you encounter ultimately know that what you want to achieve is to become a Horizon Hall of Famer. Then once you do become a Hall of Famer, there are still plenty of things left to do, especially in the accolades. For many of these that you complete, you can unlock prizes ranging from Forza Link phrases to new cars to unlock. And trust me when I say this, there is a lot to complete and it will take some time to finish all of them. Just overall, much more thought out than Horizon 4's campaign where after a certain amount of races, there really was no direction of where to go. And also, how can I forget the return of multiple Horizon Festival sites? Thank you, Playground Games. It's so nice to see different Horizon Festival sites again, especially scattered across the map, as it gives a strong vibe that the Horizon Festival is everywhere. Number three, it's refreshingly different. So Horizon 5 pulls away from many of its traditions, which makes the game feel refreshing. It seems as though the developers are really trying to make the game stand out to what it was from the past, while also respecting what the Horizon series is. The first thing is your character actually speaking. This made me listen to all of the dialogue in the game as now the characters you meet throughout your Horizon adventure, you converse with them and it just makes the interaction more intimate as opposed to how it was in previous Horizon titles where your character doesn't speak at all. Also, the barn finds get unlocked through the Horizon chapters now, one of course being the Volkswagen Beetle through the Horizon story, and the others become discoverable after a Horizon adventure chapter is complete, which I certainly don't have a problem with as it encourages the players to play the campaign of Horizon 5. Not only that, once you do find your barn find, you have an option to not wait for the car to be repaired or touched up before you collect it. You can now collect your barn find vehicle as soon as you find it however it will cost you a lot of credits and depending on which stage of the repair your barn find is will determine the amount of credits you need to pay in order to unlock the car for me i just waited like an old school horizon player as i don't want to spend 23 million credits just to unlock a ferrari f40c but anyways when i include some of these new features i'm talking about along with all the map features and biomes with the overall game structure, you can see how Horizon 5 is shaping up to be a very different game to what Horizon 4 was in a very good way. Number 4, nothing major has been left behind. What I mean by this is, in the past from Horizon 3 to Horizon 4, as I explained earlier, a lot of the things were taken away. Not just what was featured on the main map, but racing features that were beloved by the Horizon community. For example, at the launch of Horizon 4, Playground Games decided it was a good idea to remove class-based rivals. Or how about the forced team adventure where if your team sucked, you would ultimately lose. And not only that, Team Rush would also be included as a final win tally even though in previous titles racing from one destination to another was mainly an opportunity to earn XP. Now granted eventually Playground Games did fix all this in future updates but for those who bought the game at launch it left a horrible taste in our mouths questioning do Playground Games even know what we want? But three years on with Horizon 5 I can say with confidence that all of the best features in Horizon 4, even all the post-launch stuff, has been included in Horizon 5. The Eliminator, for example, is in the game at launch. Horizon Super 7 is back without the silly high-stakes variant, which was terrible, by the way. And also, Route Creator is now intertwined with the Horizon Super 7 builder, with a lot more assets to choose from, now also known as Events Lab, superseding Blueprints.
Now, at first, I was a little bit worried about this feature as Playground Games didn't show any gameplay footage of it, but from my experience, it's a major improvement from what it was in Horizon 4. It totally makes sense to have the route creator and Super 7 builder merged into one, and I'll be first to admit, I'm not the most creative guy out there, but having tested some of the amazing races or challenges made from other players using the Events Lab feature, there is a lot of potential out there to really make Horizon 5 an extremely fun and long-lasting games. But it's not without some of its issues, which I will explain later. And lastly, number five, other improvements. Let's start off with just the car sounds. Having taken actually three years to record an entire library of car audio under the new technique that Playground Games incorporated known as granular synthesis, I'm very happy that the cars actually sound like they do in real life. Now, with that said though, not all of them are super accurate, but coming from Horizon 4 where there were probably only a handful of good car sounds, this was a major improvement. Not only that, car sounds actually change when you upgrade your cars is a brilliant touch too, and having that option to hear the difference in real time while upgrading is excellent, which I must praise Playground Games for because it does show that they are really confident with the car sounds in Horizon 5. Also, the menu system now only has six tabs with each widget actually being categorized appropriately and sized to its importance, but more importantly, every widget directs you to a different place. There's no fat in the menus this time round, and with the text being so big, you also won't accidentally miss anything at all. There are also loads of new upgrades that are available this time round, such as the different tyre options available. You can now have full racing slicks or equip some drift tyres to even some off-road buggy rubber. Then there's the different transmissions available. You are no longer bounded to six gears in your racing transmission. You can now choose from a seven speed transmission or above to even the different differentials depending on what you want to achieve with your vehicle. So even the upgrades here are improved as well. There's honestly a lot more which I'll probably dive deeper into another video but those are just the ones that stood out in terms of Horizon 5's improvements compared to its previous titles. But now we move on to some of the things that in my eyes weren't so good. Beginning with number one, car customization. This is something that has always been an issue with the Horizon series, and in my eyes, the visual customization is still lacking in my opinion. Now I know for those who may have seen some of the preview footage of Horizon 5, you would have noticed some awesome new customizations available for the Mark IV Toyota Supra, the BMW E46, the Mazda RX-7, to a few more, and I don't want to sound ungrateful here, but having seen the other improvements Playground games have made, I just wish the customization was on that same level too. I mean, not everything has to be these wide body kits. You know, some new bumpers, side skirts, or rear bumpers would be nice, especially on vehicles that don't have any of those real customization options other than those silly forts looking ones and not only that with rocket bunny actually not being part of horizon 5 which i don't think is at the fault of playground games there's a huge void to fill now and as much as i love seeing the hks body kit for the new mark 5 supra or the duke dynamics customization for the porsche gt2 rs i, I would like to see individual parts being updated too this really isn't a bad point i think it's more of an unfortunate circumstance for playground games and i just think this is an element of the game that can be approved upon either through post-launch updates or a future horizon title number two car models this one i have to be very honest apart from all the new two forza cars that were brought into horizon 5 i believe most if not all the cars were directly imported from Horizon 4. Now that's not to say that all the car models are bad, in fact a lot of them are very good. But cars like the Nissan Silvia S15 still looks horrendous, the Nissan R32 Skyline GTR is the one from the Xbox 360 days, and while many of the cars in Horizon 5 are detailed, 
there are a lot of inaccuracies too, which of course were also seen in Horizon 4 too. As I mentioned before, I believe most of the cars were imported from its predecessor. And also one extra thing that kind of annoyed me a little bit was that the paddle shifts no longer work anymore like they did in Horizon 4. As you can see in cockpit view, when I shift, some cars will make a clicking noise, but the paddles don't move. And for me, remember, there's nothing worse than seeing something removed that it shouldn't from a previous title. And lastly, number three, Events Lab. Although I mentioned Events Lab as a good thing about Horizon 5, it's the actual creating part that's still relatively quite unrefined. For example, snapping onto objects you have placed doesn't exist, making things very difficult and time consuming if you want to build something very clean. But this is something Playground Games have said they will look into sometime in the future to improve the building aspect of Events Lab, which is great to hear. And really, this feature has only been in the series for around a year, and to see such a big improvement already with all the assets available. I do have confidence in Playground Games that they will stick by their word and sometime in the future update Events Lab so everyone can build things much easier. As most of you know, my channel is always constantly talking about Forza Horizon 5 and so far, given the week that we had, these were the things that stood out to me. There are other elements of the game that some I can't really comment on, such as the multiplayer aspect, because there were very specific times that Playground Games held them for review purposes, and given the time difference in Australia, I wasn't able to participate in any of them. But then, of course, there are also seasons as well, and given the week hasn't actually changed as of me making this video, I can't really say how the different seasons have affected the gameplay for Horizon 5. Now remember, this review is based on a week's worth of gameplay. It's only the beginning, and I hope this video does give you all a good overall picture of what you can expect when you first play Horizon 5. Anyways, if you did enjoy this video and found it useful, please make sure to smash the thumbs up button as it really does help me out. And lastly, if you guys would like to see more Forza Horizon 5 content right here on this channel, make sure to click the subscribe button with notifications turned on. That way you won't ever miss out on another video that goes live, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.